Hello, we are having an exciting and different conversation today. We are going to look at how other aspects of your life impact your money. And today I am blessed with a wonderful guest. Can't wait to introduce you to him. Ramel Taylor, former professional basketball player and now fitness guru. So stay with us. Your relationship with money matters. I'm Michelle Perkins, and this is the Money and You podcast where I will be breaking down your relationship with money, offering tough love money tips, and a money dating plan that will focus on lifting the barriers to success to help pave the way for better money practices and increased wealth. It's time to take control to live a limit-free life. It starts today. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Money and You show. I have a great and different show today, my first in-person guest since COVID began. I don't even remember what date my last one was or, or who that was, but it was a long time ago. So super happy to be in the studio with a live person, very tall person. And uh, so we're going to start today and we're going to talk uh, so about some interesting things. And I know you're thinking this is money. What, what's, what, what am I going to learn about money today? You're going to learn a lot and you'll find out why. So I'm going to start by introducing you to our guest today. Ramel is a former pro basketball player who transferred into fitness coaching because of the passion he has to educate women on how to uh, properly take care of themselves while managing a successful career and or family. He believes because women are selfless by nature, they need constant reminders to show up for themselves as well. Ramel hosts a monthly workshop entitled How to Be Selfish and Get the Body You Want that teaches women the importance of routines based on his four pillars, consistency, accountability, sustainability, and recovery. The best investment you can make for your career and your family is to improve your health and happiness. Welcome, Ramel. Great to have you here. Oh, it is such an honor to be here. <laughs> uh, thank you for the, the very spectacular introduction. This is all amazing. Well, I'm so excited to actually be here with somebody, especially you. <laughs> and uh, so it feels kind of uh, like old times here. And what we're talking about, the last time I was in the studio, I think the show was still the Limit Free Life show. And so I feel like uh, this is appropriate because what you're going to be talking about uh, as much as we think money is what gives us a limit-free life, um, you and I know that what really gives you a limit-free life is good health and happiness, and along with that, uh, your money will grow. I, I can't say it enough times that it is a holistic endeavor. Everything impacts everything else, so you can't just be heads down working and hope that that's going to result in all this money, because if your health deteriorates, if your relationships are falling apart, your money mindset is not going to be what it needs to be to grow your money and your your wealth. So it is equally important uh, as working hard, working smart, all managing your money well. It is equally or maybe more important actually to take care of your health. And yet we let that slip. We let that go behind everything else, just like you said, especially for women. So Ramel, give us a little background on yourself and you know how you got to this point that you're you're helping women with their health well thank you michelle so the the reason i i got started doing what i was doing it, it started i was 12 years old um my mom was a professional wrestling fan we were watching one of the late night shows this guy's cutting a promo on hulk hogan you know this is how I'm telling my age, right? So um, he's saying, I'm going to do 500 push-ups, 500 sit-ups, 500 air jacks, you know, all this stuff, a, a whole list, a grocery store list of things that is going to convince us that he's going to beat Hogan now. <laughs> Wasn't convinced, but I thought the guy was on to something. So, um, you know, being bullied at a very young age, you know, I adopted a routine very early. I actually pulled out one of those old school calendars. Uh, the ones that, you know, whatever they had, Hot Wheels or whatever. I don't know what I had on mine. It might have been Dalmatians or something like that. Uh, circled the date six months uh, from that date mm. that I watched that promo. And I told myself I was going to confront my bully. Mm. Now, fast forward, I, you know, to spare you the, the details, I throw one punch, the fight's over. I'm like celebrated all around school. Didn't get a suspension. You know, turns out the principal was waiting for the kid to get his. And it's like... It was just a great day for me. Yeah. So I, I just say that because if I can do this at, you know, 12 year old, you know, mm -hmm. not knowing anything about the world, uh, you know, kid, 
you know, I view women as the you know supreme beings of this this planet, and you guys are capable of a lot of things. You guys are actually tougher uh, than men. That's why I prefer to train you guys over men, because a lot of men they complain and they're not <laughs> <laughs> they're not very they're very intimidated. You know, huh. women take instructions. Yeah, uh, they can stick to routines. You know, all you got to do is plug and play for mm-hmm. you guys, and hmm. so. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take my sports background that I've learned, you know, in the years of professional basketball and put that, you know, put the professional women or the woman in, in that place mm-hmm. because a professional woman's mindset and an athlete's mindset is pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever just thought about the similarities, but the only difference between, you know, me and a CEO or a boss babe or a young entrepreneur is that someone taught me how to take care of my body. So mm-hmm. uh, that's why I did it, what I, I wanted to do. And the best thing about that is like there's benefits of the benefit, right? Uh, sure, you're gonna you're gonna be shredded. You're gonna have the the, the gravity defined booty you want. You're gonna have the abs you want, toned arms, everything neckline, everything you can ask for, hourglass shape. Uh, but the benefits of the benefits is like showing up. The way you show up mm-hmm. for your, your your day in business, the way you show up for your family, it's gonna it's gonna have an effect because you know we don't realize the draining forces. Um, that we do. I mean, a woman wears multiple caps. I remember the the old cartoons where the the, the guy has the, that caps oh, to yeah. the ceiling, right? So, <laughs> the superwoman of this world in today's world, you, you know, you're you're accountable for your family, your mm-hmm. your children's family, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, the mailman, the person in the grocery store that just can't <laughs> wait to tell you about their trip, right? These yeah. people are sucking your energy, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just important that you take care of yourself and that. You know, not only speaks to health, but absolutely wealth because you have energy. You have way more energy to conquer the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I love that, and I I so agree with that because money. You know, I talk about this a lot too. Money needs attention. Money mm-hmm. needs to. You know, you need to spend time with it. Yeah. And a lot of us, you know, complain about what's going on in our financial situation. But a lot of it is just not tending to it. It's not spending that time paying attention to it, looking at it, understanding it, taking certain actions with it. Uh, that too slips kind of underneath a lot of other things. And um, so there are similarities and there are definitely, I feel like people, the, part of the reason that I really wanted to have you on is I think in business and with anything that you're trying to do, there are so many great sports analogies. I mean, it, you know, sports, it, that structure of what you have to do to become a professional athlete is what you have to do to become a successful business person oh, and yeah. a you know, successful money person. I mean, it takes so much discipline, so much routine, so many things um, that you guys have to do and do well. I mean, it's not just a have to thing. It's like you guys are kind of the example, professional athletes are the example of doing it really, really well. So that's been somehow honed to <laughs> some kind of a science. It is. It's it's so crazy how relatable uh, it is. And then if you really just want a, a blatant example of how relatable health and wealth is, I mean, just drop the first letter, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same that's exact true. word, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great it's, point. it's so synonymous. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't have one without the other. Yeah. Um, you can be wealthy in many ways. You can be healthy in many ways, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There's mental health, right? There's yeah. emotional health, right? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, when it comes to wealth, there's wealth in experiences. There's mm-hmm. wealth in finances. Mm-hmm. There's wealth in family, right? Right. So all these things are related and it's almost like you know you know i'm not even the biggest i don't even know i'm using this analogy i'm not even the biggest avenger (laughs) a fan but those infinity stars of wealth and Mm. the affinity stars of health and you just go through this world trying to collect those infinity stars (laughs) you know yeah you know emotional health physical health you know Mm -hmm you know financial wealth Mm -hmm. it's you know these are gemstones that we're we're connecting and so the women that i work with uh, it's really inspiring to me because i watch these women who have 12 14 16 hour days Mm -hmm. and these women who have family Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i'm just thinking of myself as i do not want to train past 30 hours a week right Mm -hmm. like how selfish of me like (laughs) 
these guys are so or and I, I have to I'm trying to break the the guys uh, habit these women are so super <laughs> like I don't even know the term but like just so super beings right like well, we, we expect work so a lot much. of hours oh my gosh <laughs> that I know so much is expected <laughs> yeah. out of you right yeah and so it's so important to just make sure that we check in it's not that women don't want to take care of themselves mm -hmm. absolutely not yeah you guys have this unselfish being because you're life bearers right mm -hmm. you just put others before you and then all of a sudden that falls down to the that bottom of the totem pole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's my job you know to r remind the women that i work with that yeah you know it's okay to be that super being mm -hmm. but let's just like that iphone or that imac has to, to to go on the charger you have to go on the charger too so yeah. and you will you know it, it you kind of take one step back to take three steps forward mm -hmm. right and yeah. you show up supercharged for your business and your family and yourself yeah i love that and on the way here i was listening we were both at an event where we heard rachel rogers uh, everyone should be a millionaire oh, so speak, amazing. and she was amazing so i've been listening to her book and one of the things that she talked about were broke ass decisions and million dollar decisions and you know one of the million dollar decisions was taking the time and investing the money in somehow keeping up your health not being not continually saying oh my gosh I wish I could you know take that Pilates class or start running or whatever but I just don't have the time and um, yeah so that actually is one of those decisions that is going to keep you from making more money from doing what you need to do with your money so that you can get wealthy so I thought that was really interesting because it it might even um, mean spending money you know spending money on a, on a coach or trainer or something uh, but in the end that investment will completely pay off because you're getting more you're getting your energy back and you know you're able to just do more with your time absolutely um, you know the one thing the difference in the women that I work with and then I have prospective clients that I meet with and the one thing that is the separating factor is it's not the 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 idea that they they don't need it mm -hmm. um, it's the idea that this is a cost versus an investment mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we invest in a lot of things we invest in <laughs> clothing <laughs> we invest yeah. in ideas we invest in things that don't do anything for us right mm -hmm. you know just just for entertainment right yeah and the one thing that really baffles me is you know we we may change spouses we may change careers we mm -hmm. may change a lot of things but the vessel that we live in this body is with us yeah uh, you know to the end of the road right mm -hmm. until until it's time to go home right yeah. yeah and so it just baffles me that people can't wrap their their head around making an investment in the one thing that will never mm -hmm. leave you. This is the only constant that is guaranteed to you. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is kind of similar to money. I say that all the time too because, you know, your relationship with money, money isn't something you can you, you can't disengage with money in the society we live in. There might be, you know, I mean the way we live in this country in this day and age, money is also with you. I mean, it's a it's a factor. It factors into all your decision making from the time you're little until the end. So the two are similar that way. You have to manage your relationship with both, I think. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I always tell people, you know, money's right up there with oxygen, but mm -hmm. we seem to talk a lot about money. We don't talk enough about oxygen, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've been reading, uh, I don't know if you've read the book Breathe. Uh, there's a lot of people talking about that because when you mention oxygen, just how you breathe even is, a, is and yeah, another whole topic, but anyway. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, so tell us a little about those four pillars. Okay, so um, when I was an athlete and I was training, you know, I was training maybe six hours a day, six days a week. Mm -hmm. I was one of the, the the guys, you know, the coach knew that, you know, he's going to show up in training camp mm -hmm. in shape. He's, mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about this guy. And, I, <laughs> I, you, know, I, you know, the late Kobe Bryant was a great example of his work that day. He was one of my favorite players, and I, I love to follow his career. Um but I really just adopted that, you know, I just, you know, consistency, obviously. The only difference, you know, I tell people, the only difference between my fitness journey is your fitness journey. Mine started at 12 mm -hmm. and I, I never stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were on the same path with me, if we were on the same road and we're let's like, just put two cars going on the same road together, mm -hmm. you know, 
who cares if one's a little faster than the other or one's right. a little better than the other? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're going to we're gonna pretty much be neck and neck as mm-hmm. long as we don't slow down or stop, right? We'll right. be close to each other. Um, and so consistency is the, the first pillar. Mm-hmm. And it's all about winning the day. Mm-hmm. You know, I know you want to look toward, you know, I tell women, you know, that are in these six-month programs, um, I know you want to look towards the, the six months and you want to, you know, you want to envision that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I want mm-hmm. you to envision that you in six months. Right. Um, but I want you to know that in order to get to that six months, we got to win each mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I love that. And so the consistency is, is pillar number one. Um, accountability is pillar number two, right? Mm-hmm. So when I build these programs, it has to be consistent. It has to have 100% accountability. Mm-hmm. And the way we do that, you know, accountability is just making sure that we know what we're signing up for. Right. You know, I sit down with these women and, I, you know, make sure that they have the psyche to... Mm-hmm to take on this, you know, the the last thing I want is, you know, to put you in a program that's designed to fail you, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I want to make sure this works for you. We got to make sure that the days that you guys are signed up to work out, they don't interfere. Why why would we put you in a workout plan yeah. at 6 a.m. when you hate to get up anytime past 9 a.m., right? Right, You know, right. so we got to set you up for success. Mm-hmm. Um, Love and, that. Yeah, so that accountability piece is a very important pillar. The third pillar to that, sustainability. And sustainability, honestly, is just trackability. Mm-hmm. Notice these all these terms are very, <laughs> very synonymous in wealth, right? Yeah, uh, and business, and yeah, no, I'm loving that. That's exactly. You know, hey, you got if you want to make money, you got to work consistently on yeah, it, right? Yeah, you know, you got to be accountable for putting in the work, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got to be sustainable. We can't burn ourselves out trying to make a few bucks, right? Right. Um, we got to make sure that our system is set up to pull in money. Mm-hmm. Well. In the in the health world, um, we get we have some trackable metrics. You know, mm-hmm. we got to make sure you know how many calories you're eating, mm-hmm. just like you got to know how much money you're spending and making, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so synonymous. Uh huh. Um, so sustainability is just trackability. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like if a tree falls and no one's around, right? Does it make a sound, right? Yeah. So we got to make sure that you you know reps, sets, calories. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. Time put in, things of that nature. Yeah, tracking is a fascinating thing. The more you track, the more you can, you know, the more you can measure something like that, the more it grows and expands. I love that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Data, I mean, mm-hmm. you learn with data, analyze, and mm-hmm. then you go to the drawing board. You make, you tweak one piece yeah. to, and then see if that is the, the piece that gets you over the hump. Mm-hmm. Same thing in business, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the, great. The fourth pillar, uh, recovery, which is... The fourth, but it's not the least. It's Mm -hmm. probably the most important. Interesting. You know, how are you showing up in your business, right? If we're not getting much sleep and we're going out to party, Mm -hmm. probably Mm -hmm. not showing up. Mm -hmm. Same thing's going to happen in the gym for yourself, right? Right, right. If you're not sleeping eight hours, if you're not stretching, Mm -hmm. if you're not eating the proper nutrients, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's That's my four pillars that I would build any health and fitness program with. If you have those four pillars, if you're consistent, accountable, mm-hmm. everything is sustainable, mm-hmm. and you recover properly, I promise you, you can get to any fitness goal hmm. you want to accomplish. And I, I'm pretty sure we took those four pillars and put them in a, any type of yeah. business and financial yeah. environment. It would be the same result, too. Yeah, I love that. I, I'm, I have a money date program where I try to help people on, set up consistently set up regular money dates and uh, and sometimes um, and it, it, it has those four pillars and I think that's why it works it's interesting because as you're talking I'm like oh that's that's the structure that makes it all work and and I love the sustainability piece because people will come to me and they say yeah well I'm gonna make Friday night my money date and this is just a date with you and your money not like you and your partner and your money just you and your money and I, and every time I hear that I'm like those Friday nights are going to come along, and you're going to want to do something more fun at the end of your week, and then have a date with your money. So um, it is yeah. funny how people do kind of set themselves up. Uh, Friday? Why not Tuesday? Right? I don't know. Yeah, Friday. Everything night. happens Who Friday. Nothing happens <laughs> Tuesday except yeah. tacos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. And so you've 
created your program based on those four pillars so you can help people kind of navigate that absolutely if uh you know if there's something going wrong in the program i'm able to go to that to make sure mm -hmm. that i have a checklist to make sure that that person yeah. in that program is is properly doing right. the program <laughs> so yeah you know that's something that i had when i was an athlete mm -hmm. it was it was very successful um and not just the success of just the stats that I've had as a basketball player. I measure success in many ways. I went. I was an athlete. And I'm. I'm a very explosive, very dynamic athlete. Mm -hmm. And I've never had any serious injuries. I've mm -hmm. had some of the greatest trainers in the world. You know, when you guys are trying to, or gals, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'm trying to break this habit. <laughs> Bear with me. When you women are trying to embark on this journey right um it's it's so important that you you know you're acqu you're acquiring this wealth mm -hmm. what are we going to spend it on right mm -hmm. if we're not taking care of ourselves it's not okay just because you acquired wealth to just spend it on yourself you know in your elder years fixing mm -hmm. yourself right mm -hmm. yeah. wouldn't you rather spend that money on something much more inter interesting like yeah. a trip with mm -hmm. the family and mm -hmm. you know buying new clothes you know who wants to who wants to drop money on surgery that yeah to live and just walk around this earth right yeah no you're exactly right I I love that too because there is a long-term you know view for this uh, there's not necessarily immediate gratification just like there isn't with money I mean there really oh, yeah. is you know, rarely a get rich quick kind of money making thing. It's usually investing in kind of the tried and true and waiting it out. And what you're talking about is the same. You have to have the patience to put in, put in the time and the benefits show up, like you say, later in life when you're able to still move around and, you know, enjoy your life at whatever age. So. Absolutely. I mean, just like there's no get rich scheme, mm -hmm. right? There's no get skinny quick <laughs> scheme either, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there, you know, we all know that the, there's, there's the, these programs out there that people will yeah. unfortunately fall down that rabbit hole, right? Right. Um, you know, there was a story I learned as a little kid, and I'm sure you guys know this story, the tortoise and the hare, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I've been living on this planet 36 years waiting for the hare to win this, and he hasn't won yet. <laughs> yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. Just put in the work yeah. and show up mm -hmm. and be consistent. Yeah. You know, you know, con small, consistent steps will, will run circles around mm -hmm. short sporadic burst mm -hmm. yeah so so apropos for for a money journey as well I, I really love that actually I think people need to hear that it is so tempting to go after something that you think is just gonna be like oh my gosh I'll do this and in five years I'll be retired and yeah, the home runs attractive yeah <laughs> it's always attractive slam duck home runs are always attractive yeah. yeah it's it's a really interesting conversation and I do know um, because I am considerably older, you know, people at my age, um, most of us are probably regretting that we didn't, we weren't more consistent and we weren't more accountable. And, um, you know, a lot of excuses out there, obviously. But um, well, how do you help people? Because I know the struggle that it is to find time to show up for yourself. So what are some of the, the kind of I mean, part of it is hiring somebody, uh, you know, just like hiring a coach. You have to show up when you're paying somebody money and scheduling a time with someone. So that is a good strategy. Absolutely. Um, it's, uh, you know, outsourcing is always the king. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're the type of person, you got to know your, yourself, right? Yeah. You got to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're the type of person that can get it done without a coach, you know, kudos to you. Pat on the back. Mm -hmm. you're, you've, you've earned that discipline badge is what I say. Mm hmm you know, you have that badge of honor. You're a disciplined person. Yeah. Congratulations. Somebody taught you well. <laughs> yeah. But if you're if you're not as disciplined, and, and you know, I, I like to use the analogy, you and your body are like BFFs. Mm -hmm. And so some of us have neglected to spend time with our BFFs. Mm -hmm. That relationship is now a little shaky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have to we, we can repair this relationship because your bff it will be down for you as long as you mm -hmm. you do this but in order to get the best relationship out of you and your bff you just got to spend a little time with it mm -hmm. just like money yeah, yeah just like money <laughs> and you spend a little time and your bff is 
It's pretty strong, right? Your BFF mm-hmm. doesn't need all your time. Your BFF understands your schedule, your needs, your wants. Mm-hmm. However, if you just consistently meet up with your BFF, that relationship will grow over time and you will be more in tune and you will be more happy mm-hmm. than you probably have ever been in your life because you're going to feel good when you put your clothes on mm-hmm. and you're going to feel sexy when you take your clothes off. And that is something, unfortunately, that money cannot buy. Yeah, you are exactly right about that. And I just know, too, um, the amount of energy that you have to, whether you're a business owner or whether you're you know, a, a leader in a, in a company or a corporate environment, um, to keep that, um, I don't know, the, the enthusiasm for what you do going, oh, to absolutely. keep that interest and... You know, it, it, you are spending a lot of energy on other people. Maybe you're managing a team, maybe you have clients, whatever. And so if you don't refill, you know, your own fuel tank, it's just not, it, it can't really last very well. I mean, something will happen. You know, you'll get sick, you'll have a physical injury, but you can also have a lot of depression and and mental illness as a result of not taking care of yourself. It's, yeah, I, I like to call it, you know, to sum it up, you know, if we relate the two worlds, it's it's pretty much a, it's a it's a health deficit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a wealth deficit, mm-hmm. which is debt. Yeah. There's a health deficit, which is all the things that you just named. Yeah. And so, let's just use the business analogy. If you hire all these employees, and mm-hmm. you're you're just handing out money on a silver platter, and mm-hmm. your business isn't drawing any money, right? Right. You know that's not sustainable. Right. And, you know, let's just take the the Let's swap the money for your energy. Mm-hmm. So now your energy is on a silver pallor. Mm-hmm. And yeah. your friends, your family, your loved ones. I mean, you love these people, but right. it is what it is. It is mm-hmm. a taxing situation. Yeah. And so these people are, are taking energy from you. And mm-hmm. that's okay because you're superwoman. <laughs> yeah. We just got to remember to pull up in the energy gas station. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if you're not built like a Tesla, we got to refill. Yeah. You just make sure you check in with yourself. And the cool thing about that, working out is one of the best ways to do that because yeah. when you're in the middle of a workout, you're not thinking of anything else. Yeah. Yeah. That's you're, a you, huge benefit. There. You're having a mental break. Uh, I call it an active meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And nothing else matters except for the sweat, one more rep, and getting through this, this obstacle. And yeah. then... It doesn't take long. A 45, 30 minute, 45 minute workout could do wonders on the psyche and you may show mm-hmm. up that much more recharged after that. Yeah, I love that. I I forget that piece of it, but to just tune things out um, and you stop thinking about everything that's worrying you or stressing you out for whatever mm-hmm. period of time while you exercise, this is much, I, I always thought of, you know, it. it I think it's great to look great to, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve that way. But for me, and I used to be like really serious about my exercise, um, but haven't been in a while. And, and I, every day I, I see the loss of that, you know, it was, it was such an important part of my life. So I'm, I'm trying myself to get back into it and make that a consistent thing. But, um, but the impact on my mental state was what I loved the most. I mean, you know. It did feel good to be able to get in those pants or whatever, but it yeah. <laughs> mentally to just release what needs to be released, to get some calm and, and everything else is just huge. I mean, that was, to me, the, the most important thing. We have such a crisis right now in terms of mental health anyway. So if everybody's exercising more and getting physically better, that just shifts your mental state really well. Absolutely. I always tell people this this state would be a total different or not state. This country would be yeah. a total different country. Yeah. Uh, if we we kind of right now most of the country is surplusing on calories. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and we're in debt, so we're in a deficit yeah. for wealth. Mm-hmm. And if we could flip that, mm-hmm. if we could find a way to flip that and we could surplus in money mm-hmm. and have a deficit in calories. Yeah. Boy, will we have a lot of fit, rich people running around this town. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and they, they do go hand in hand. It is, it's very difficult to do the things that need to be done to grow your, your monetary wealth 
if, if physically you're just, you know, feeling badly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're not going to do the things in any area of your life and you're just not going to have success. I mean, period. So it is rather amazing that we aren't spending more money on that and more time and more yeah. energy. Yeah. So. I'm hoping, you know, but I'm hopeful, you know, mm -hmm. I do as a fitness professional in this world, you know, I'll, I'm gonna, I want to do my part and I want to, I want to take this initiative um, because it is an initiative. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason I start mm -hmm. with women, it's not because I enjoy them. It's not because it, well, obviously I do enjoy the, the energy and everything. But the real reason is, I mean, they're the life bearers. Mm -hmm. So they give all life. So just imagine a universe where every woman in the world knows how to take care mm -hmm. of themselves and know all the health tricks and, and yeah. tips that they can pass down. You know, a lot of people are building wealth for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Some of them are building for generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, what I'm doing is my part to build generational health. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts with the woman, the life bearer. Yeah. If she knows how to take care of herself, then this world will be in a better place. Yeah, and you know, what I do remember from the days when I was in really good shape is the confidence boost you get from it too. And part of it's the, you know, I showed up, I did what I said I was gonna do, I'm making progress, I'm, you know, showing results, whatever. But that confidence is huge too. And that translates into the other areas of your life. So you do feel more powerful uh, in, you know the financial area as well as maybe your professional life and so it has that uh, that power as well oh absolutely absolutely I was talking to a, a client this morning uh, she was sharing a story uh, my homegirl Kim from uh, Brooklyn was ate a chicken leg one too many and, <laughs> and was not happy about it was not was really dis so distraught that she ran she took a 45 minute run before our session <laughs> oh, i mean wow. that's just what type of you know, self-punishment yeah. right and, <laughs> and i just had to remind her like hey you've you work hard right mm -hmm. you've you've put yourself in a great situation so and i actually used the money analogy i was mm -hmm. like if you know you've worked hard you've built yourself a nice nest egg it's mm -hmm. okay to splurge every once in a while right yeah right you're not mm -hmm. doing this every day yeah. So give yourself a little slack. I, I like to use the, the analogy, you know, Michelle, I know you were speaking about your fitness journey. The cool thing about your inactivity, you're actually still on your fitness journey. It's just a hiatus mm, or sabbatical, like however you want to look at it. Yeah. But this is still a part of your fitness journey. Mm -hmm. You are still learning about about this. Right. And I like to use that analogy that it's a marathon. Mm hmm. Because when you're when you're 40, your 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 journey is going to look different. When you're 50, your journey is going to look different. Mm -hmm. When you're 60, your journey is going to look. I have a 60 year old that, <laughs> Lord, I think her journey is the same as she's 30. Mm -hmm. She's just, yeah. Women are fine wine. You guys are built to last. We're <laughs> built like cars. We're we're lemons at 50. You know. <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm trying not to say anything to any of these comments, but, but I'm listening though. But yeah, you're still on your you're still on your your journey, mm -hmm. um, and at any given time, you could guess what. This day that you have in front of you could be a day mm -hmm. to take your journey on the road. Yeah. And so just yeah. remember that. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I, I am on a little mission right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to listen. Remember those words. That's really good. So what um, what do you think are some of the key things that you learned in your professional athletic career that you share with with people? I mean, the pillars are, are one or four, actually. Yeah. But um, what else <laughs> are some of the things that you took away from that career? So. I I'm really I I really like calling my ladies athletes and they they get a mm. kick out of it too. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. They, I like I, I always tell them I'm gonna make an honest athlete out of you. <laughs> That's great. And so, I think besides the pillars, you know, obviously besides the moves that you know we do and these mm -hmm. cool moves and these abs, um, nutrition is like the biggest thing. Mm -hmm that people are so amazed by. And even if you're not interested in nutrition per se, you probably like to eat. Yeah, I like to eat <laughs> so, a lot, yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite you things. You know, it's, 
You know, it's one thing that's always going to be with us, right? Mm-hmm. And so what I like to do is I like to teach, I like to teach women, you know, how how many calories they should eat. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to tweak them. I like to give them multiple options, right? Mm-hmm. Because let's just say, Michelle, if I gave you, I say, Michelle, you're supposed to eat 1,200 calories, okay. right? It's a lot of pressure to... Stay in twelve hundred calories. Sure. If you if you if you hit it, you feel great, right? Mm-hmm. But the the day you go over your twelve hundred calories, guess what? You feel like me after I lost the game. You're ready. Yes. Yeah. And, and you're like, I'm done, <laughs> right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, nutrition is is really cool because I teach them how to number one structure their nutrition around their their everyday lifestyle. For example, mm-hmm. I just can't expect a SVP of a bank to prepare her own meals if she's mm-hmm. working 16 hours a day. Yeah, right? great point. Mm-hmm. So, you know, obviously we we have to come to an understanding, like in order to get to where you have to get to, mm-hmm. someone has to prepare your meals for you. Yeah. And yeah. that's just what it is, mm-hmm. unless you can find a way to work less hours. Oh, I kind of love that. There's a lot of mindset that goes in there. I mean, you know, women have weird reactions. I'm, I don't know. Maybe they don't. Mm-hmm. Do, are they usually like, "Yay, I'll hire a chef," or are they do they have to like kind of churn through the? Well, we, you know, it's just a holding hand process. It's mm-hmm. like it's new. It's scary, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's and and who knows what they're thinking? You know, right. for me, <laughs> you know, I could be thinking, you know. I have to come to the realization that I can't do this by myself. That mm-hmm. could be hard, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, same as business, right? Yeah. <laughs> how, yeah. Are we, how are we going to scale up in business? Yeah. You know, if we're, we're trying to do everything ourselves, or right? We're not going to go anywhere. Nope. So, it's <laughs> true. You know, we, you know, teaching you not only calories, you know, teaching you about protein. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's the most deficient thing in women is protein. They don't really know how much they should eat. Mm-hmm. You know, whether, you know, and there's they, these special diets like keto, vegan. That yeah, are just, there's so much out there. It's just, it's really hard to figure out. I mean, you know, one day something's really important. The next day it's completely off limits. I mean, I, it, it is really kind of difficult. It is. So how do I expect a, C, a SVP, excuse me, of a bank to plan her own workouts? Mm-hmm. Make sure she cooks her own meals, <laughs> yeah. logs her nutrition. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. no. So that's what I do for my clients. My my job is to try to alleviate that pressure to make the health portion mm-hmm. much more easier, so that you can spend your time and energy being, excuse my French, the badass that you are in mm-hmm. your industry. Right? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love the way um, you know you're you're forcing them to be aware, which is something I, I just had another show where we talked about the importance of awareness and um, and and then you also uh, keeping it real in terms of what they can really do because I do think that's a problem women have. I do think men, to their credit, are slightly more realistic. They they don't try to take on you know a thousand things a day and and assume they're going to be able to do them. Well, number one, we can't. We're incapable <laughs> yeah. of that. You guys that. are the, yeah. or excuse me, there it is again. You gals are the only people on this planet that can do that, number one. And number two, I'll do you one better. We're better at being selfish. That's honestly what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, and I teach a workshop every month called How to Be Selfish and Get the Body You Want. Yeah. Uh, and the word selfish has a negative undertone. When you see selfish, it usually it's negative, yeah, right? women don't like to be selfish. They no like one, to take care of everybody else first. Of course you don't, because yeah. you're the most unselfish being on this planet, right? However, in being selfish, I don't want you to be selfish in, you know, not sharing the last chicken nugget with your right. family, right? <laughs> yeah. I want you to be selfish as in take a day of self-care. Mm-hmm. Uh, show yourself self-love. Mm-hmm. Um, be more self-aware of what's going on inside of you and around you. Yeah. With you. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean about being selfish. And so yeah. we have to come to grips that that's not necessarily a negative thing. Yeah, and I think it's great to have somebody like you telling people that it's okay because this was... 
the gist of another conversation um, that I just had where you take on this persona and this identity of, of being that person who's always, you know, putting yourself last or whatever. And it is hard to pull yourself away from that. You feel like, you know, people won't even recognize me. Like, they're not going to know who I am anymore. I've turned into somebody new. And, you know, um, I think it's really important to be brave and and go there because you have to. I mean, it's, uh, you know, and I, I work with people, too, who are trying so hard to make more money by working so much harder and literally spending nothing and doing nothing for themselves, taking no time for themselves at all. I mean, even to have a meal out, nothing. And, um, and you just look at that and you think, this is never going to work. I mean, you can't work hard enough to overcome, you know, how difficult you're, you're making your life. There is no, uh, the, the slide is gone, but that health and happiness piece, that really is foundational. Yeah. And so it feels scary. It's your recovery thing. It feels scary to take the time off, like, oh, my gosh, you know, maybe my muscles will all go away if I take a, you know, two-day break. Mm -hmm. But, in fact, it's what helps them. It's what helps them grow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, it's honestly it's just a it's a it's a bad energy is what it is mm -hmm. um, yeah, I love that it's it's an energy of scarcity yeah deprivation yeah. scarcity you're right and that if you have an energy of scarcity around that you'll have an energy of scarcity around everything really yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's a mindset the person afraid to, to spend the money on marketing to, to mm -hmm. promote themselves to get the business that mm -hmm. they're so desperately working for mm -hmm. right yeah but they just can't wrap their mind about or the person killing themselves you know and and you know on cardio work because mm -hmm. they just can't wrap their mind around you know lifting weights mm -hmm. or something like that it's yeah, I, I think it's so interesting how um, how tied together they are and how many uh, how closely linked they are in terms of the thinking. I mean, if you think that way about you know your workouts, then you can more easily think that way about your money or your business. Easy. And, uh, so you're like a springboard to getting people to you know work in that way in all the other areas of their life. So that's a great thing. I I thank you for saying that, Michelle. I. I kind of love the fact that it's basically it's it's the the way I want to put it is I want to say it's it's integrally aligning, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you know if your if your money's aligned, your health's aligned, yeah, your emotions aligned, mm -hmm. it's like everything's it's like feels good, yeah, like life is great right now because yeah. it is easy to manipulate. Nothing's fighting each other. Yeah, everybody's getting along. You know. Yeah, no, I love that. And it, it is living in integrity to mm -hmm. do what you say you're going to do and to support that part of yourself so that you can do all this other stuff and take care of other people. So I, I think you're you're thinking about, you know, it's always so important to know why you do something. Yeah. And um, I think your why is is a really powerful one and really great and will really help a lot of people. So Thank to you. that end, because. I didn't know how long we were talking, and, and it's like time. So uh, can you tell people how to connect with you and absolutely. work with you? Oh, absolutely. You guys can find me on www.hardworkissexy.com. Um, if you want to know where I got that, that, that moniker, that was my moniker in sports. Usually the hardest working person in the room is usually the sexiest. If you want to <laughs> test that, that theory... I dare you to find the hardest working person in the room and see if that person is not the first or top sexiest person in the room at the time. <laughs> I dare you to, to, to find that. But hardworkissexy.com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at hardworkissexy, I-N-C, Inc. Right. Okay. And how about those workshops that you do? Absolutely. If you guys go to the website, hardworkissexy.com, there's a link on there for the workshops. Uh, sign up for those workshops, how to be selfish and get the body you want. You're gonna spend three days with me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you, for, you know, an hour a day how to be more selfish, all okay. right? I'm pretty good at it, I'm a male, so <laughs> yeah. let me teach you. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much, that was really great. I'm more inspired, and I hope you're inspired, audience, because um, it, it don't for a minute think that it's a luxury uh, to do this. It's really a necessity if you are wanna be successful in your professional career and with your money, earning, uh, earning wealth. Um, so take this in, 
check out Ramel's website and his workshop and, um, and get a little more selfish. So, uh, and you can also uh, check out LimitFreeLife.com and get some free resources on career change, on your relationship with money, and on entrepreneurship. And uh, you can reach out to me anytime, uh, Michelle, two L's, at LimitFreeLife.com. And you will find us, you'll find this podcast on ubngo.com, on the Limit Free Life YouTube channel, and on all the podcast platforms you might be listening to, and now on Roku. So thank you so much for being here. We love having you uh, listen to the show. I'd love reviews or, you know, any kind of uh, feedback that you'd like to give me. I would love to hear from you. And uh, thanks so much for being here. We'll see you next week. <laughs>